Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. I am here today as part of the creative team over at the scraphappy.org community. And full disclosure, I do get compensated for my work over there. And this month on the blog, our team is talking about grid designs. And I wanted to show you my take on not only grids, but circular grids. Now here's a quick peek at what we're working on today. And it may not look like a grid right off the bat, but let me talk you through my thought process and see where we go. I am starting off this layout with this piece of paper that I created using watercolors in a previous video. If I can find that video, I will link you up. Now that paper is for sure a grid, but from the quick sneak peek, you notice that the layout didn't look necessarily like a grid. And that's because I'm gonna use those circles as anchor points to my design. And so the final product won't look as formal as an actual grid design. Now, as I'm chatting here, I. I am going through my collection of crafting related paper because the photos I am scrapbooking today are about the crop and create card making event that just happened this past weekend and I'm still kind of on a high from that so that's on my mind and that's what I'm going to work on today. I am feeling a little indecisive about what products to pull out so I'm just going to pull out a little bit at a time and go back to my folder. <clears throat> Pardon me go back to my folder time and time again to pull out more things as I start um, pulling ideas together. I do want to trim down that circular paper, that, that grid, circular grid paper, so that I can mat it onto this scissor paper. And I wanted, that's the first step I'm going to use to pull in these uh, crafty elements to this design. I have a cut apart sheet there. I cut out three cards from that sheet, trying to decide which one I want to use. And this one actually is my favorite. So while I'm moving things around a little bit, that one will end up being the only one I use later on and um, partially because I don't have room and partially because uh, the colors worked a little bit better. So the next step I'm doing is choosing some papers to map my photos and I could choose any old papers. They don't have to necessarily be craft related just because the matting is so small that you probably won't notice any icons in there. But since my folder is sitting here and these collections have some good um, general patterns to them, I'm just gonna go ahead and use those. And I decide on this green piece from a simple, a recent Simple Stories craft collection, and I can link you up to that if you're interested. Um, and I have this piece of pattern paper, which is kind of a more inky or painterly kind of paper from a much older Simple Stories collection. So I will link you up to any products that I can uh, find that are still current. So here is where I'm using those circles to anchor the corners of my photo. So each photo corner sits as near the center of a circle as I can get it. Of course, um, they're not going to fit perfectly because I made these circles at random, not knowing what I wanted to do. The other thing I'm going to use these circles for is to anchor my title block and my journaling block. And as you see me working on my titling block here, I am even using the shape of the circle to inform my title. So I am calling this C and C cards just because I didn't have enough alphabet letters to spell out the whole crop and create card making event. So I'm shortening it to CNC cards and I'm gonna add in this sticker that I think it says make make pretty things or something like that. Make things pretty, maybe, oh, it doesn't matter. So uh, that's gonna kind of be part of my title, a little bit of a subtitle there. And that whole circle is one unit of a grid that is going to contain some information. And part of what I talked about over in my post on Scrap Happy blog, and I will link you up to that if you wanna go read the whole thing, um, is that one of the nice thing about grid designs is that the grid units help break up the layout into parts and pieces to make them a little easier for viewers to consume and to read and to kind of break down and move from one part of the layout to the next. So here you kind of see me pointing out how I'm trying to get these photos to um, anchor to those circles in the background. And this final blue circle at the bottom, I'm using to anchor that that cut apart card as well. And here is where I'm anchoring, anchoring my journaling into that final circle. So every circle 
uh, grid unit on this pattern paper has an element anchored to it. Oh, pardon my phone. And yet the final layout does not look particularly like a grid design. So that is uh, the way I'm using the circles as a grid to anchor things helps push that grid to the background a little bit. And grids, grid layouts can be feel fairly formal. And so by using this kind of technique, it softens it up, makes it less formal, pushes that grid a little bit to the background and uh, works in a slightly different way than a traditional grid layout. And as I've been telling you about that design element, I have been pulling lots of stickers from this sticker book, which is also from that same Simple Stories collection. And here's a tip I've seen other YouTubers do, which I've used a tiny bit, but it, I, it's making a lot of sense to me now as I'm pulling out so many stickers, and that's to use a piece of wax paper, one, because you can see through it, and two, because it's kind of non-stick, so you can put all these elements on top of your layout, get an idea about how they're going to flow, and not worry about damaging anything in the process. So that um, wax paper trip trick is something I will probably be pulling out more and more, and so I think several of the YouTubers um, and I don't know exactly who I've seen do this necessarily, but uh, grateful for other people sharing their crafty um, styles and tips and tricks on YouTube as well. So just a little bit about how I go about my embellishing is that I usually like to make a visual triangle of clusters of embellishments. Now I am doing a cluster around my journaling, which kind of makes my triangle more of a square. Um, but that's okay. I'm going to go with it. And I am kind of color coordinating my clusters. So since my bottom foot, oh, I thought I wanted to house all my clusters on some tags, but all of the tags I pulled out were too big for what I had going on. Maybe if I had thought about it earlier in the process, that could have worked. I had, while I was looking for tags, I did find a few frames and I thought, okay, well, I can... I can use a little bit of this as just a little bit of an extra emphasis to um, the beginning and the ending point of my layout with the title and the journaling. So I'm going to put those in place. As for the rest of my embellishment clusters, I, like I started to say, I am kind of color coordinating them. So the bottom left photo is sitting on the bottom left corner of that photo is sitting on a yellow um, circle. So I'm going to coordinate yellow. My title's on pink, so that's getting pink embellishments upper right photo with the upper right corner is blue and my journaling is pink again. So that is how I am deciding for my journaling clusters. Now the yellow cluster, I didn't have a lot of specifically yellows. So I got oranges and greens that lean towards yellow as best as I could from that sticker book. And really with a simple clusters where I touch and overlap those stickers and that really finishes off my clusters. And I have my journaling on there and the layout is done. So as I leave you with some final photos, let me say thank you so much for being here and for watching. And I appreciate your support by giving this video a like, leaving a comment. And if you're interested in any crafty shopping, you can use my affiliate links in the description box below for anything that you happen to be shopping for. It doesn't have to be items necessarily that I link up. And I should be back tomorrow with a project share from the month of March. And until then, have an artful day.